Okay, I have a new effect here. It's called Photo Montage. You can download it from a link in the description. Just want to go over the details of how to use this a little bit. Uh, most of you can figure out how to probably do better stuff with this than I can. So, when you first start out with a clip, you're probably going to want to uh, do some color correction with it first. I'm going to want to increase the dynamic range a little bit and then add my filter or effect. Okay, it defaults to eight images or eight photo frames and you can turn them all off if you want because what's going on in the background is you have a built-in blur that defaults to this 32. You can run it up all the way or you can bring it down and there's also a zoom blur added because a lot of times it makes a great contrast for this effect. And then you can just add as many photos that you want. And they're in order by default from one, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, and eight. And if you're not gonna use any of these extra ones, like for this particular project, I only wanna use five. Zoom out a little bit and drag these extra controllers off the screen because they can be a little bit distracting. And then I uh, recommend arranging your photos uh, how you want the final output to look because these can be animated. So you can animate these into place and then change them around a little bit here and there. I think I actually want this one to lean this way a little bit. Something like that. I'm going to colorize the background a little bit. Uh, change the mode uh, to maybe screen. Change the color to kind of a blue. Fit this back up again. Okay. I don't need much of the color effects. I've got the solid opacity set down rather low. So you have the number of photos. Uh, there's a drop shadow setting to help create a, an illusion of depth and separation from the background. Uh, the blur amount, I've gone over that. Uh, you can change the center of the zoom. Don't, you might want to play with that. It's probably a good thing you just leave it right where it is at uh, center. Uh, the solid color, solid opacity, the blend mode, and you can change the Z space position of these images with these settings here. So you can, and you can see you get an interesting uh, parallax view and a little bit of a zoom with the elevation. So this is the only amount of zoom that you get, normal and the elevation. And these are set up so that they can be animated into place. I suggest going to the photo montage title bar and if you set a keyframe, set all the keyframes with one selection there. That way you will not be confused or distracted later by trying to figure out which keyframe is which. It's just better to keyframe everything and then make the changes you want. There's this line here that says below for keyframing. There's a check mark here. This check mark doesn't do anything. I just put this in here as a separator. And all of these positions down here can be manipulated with the on-screen controls. So I'm just going to move these back into place. Okay. Like this. Uh, be careful if you're using negative rotations, which is clockwise. 
you might not get the animation you're expecting because the value goes from 0 to 360. You can see down here, here's the marker. Right now I'm at 336, and if I go up this way, it's going to skip all the way to zero. And if you keep running that, it's going to be that extra spin. So be careful of that. Uh, you can manually set your spins with these controls, but just be careful. You, you may have to deal with that. It's just a little caveat that you have to deal with. And so this is a pretty cool little cutout effect. And it doesn't matter where on the screen you take it, it's going to cut out to the background. Sort of. I'm not going to go into the details of how I pulled this off. No, it's kind of interesting. Anyway, so do a little skyline. And that's the photo montage effect. Let me try this one over here. I did this one earlier. Okay, that's another thing I should mention. There is no way in the effect to turn the image on and off as a keyframe setting. So what I what you have to do is set up your final scene and then slice your clip into sections and just kind of have them pop on. Now you can animate them in each one of these sections separately if you need them to turn on or just appear something like that it will require cutting your clip and setting it up like that anyway there it is i hope you enjoy it and i'll catch you on the next one